while you guys are away, Monique calls Ashley. You kind of bring up, you would have pressed charges if you were Candace. And that's where Karen admits what she had told Candace. I said to Candace, if it were me, and I felt as strongly as Candace has been speaking to me, I would look into what can I do legally. <laughs> I wasn't gonna choose one friend over the other. That was clear out of the gate for me that whatever you all needed, I was going to provide for either one or both of them. Karen just didn't feel comfortable. She did not wanna be in the middle at all. Like she didn't want to say, you know, Candace, yes, Monique was wrong because then that might have hurt Monique's feelings. Or she didn't want to say, Candace, maybe both of you did it because then that would hurt Candace's. So she literally just wanted to stay out of it. I was like, oh, but when we were in your house and you were hosting and we were having this big conversation, you didn't act like Monique did anything wrong. Oh, but you are telling Candace to press charges against your BFF? I respect her as a grown woman. She asked me what would I have done if it were me and I answered her. I talked to Karen the night of, but then she called me to check on me the day after. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you know, 48 hours from the fight, she says to me, and I quote, if it were me, I would have pressed charges. Wait, what? I didn't tell you that? I thought I told you that. I thought I told you that. Hold on. Karen is the one that told you to pursue legal action against Monique? Karen never once made it like she was on my side or Candace's side. She said, I'm on both of y'all's side. So hearing that, it was just like, that was just like so left field. So I was like, okay, I need to talk to Karen and see what's going on. Now here's the caveat. I would have pressed charges at the fight. She should have filed charges the next morning for sure or that night, 100%. I'm not Candace, but if I were Candace, which I am not, if I were in a fight, y'all would know I would be innocent. And so nine, one, one right there. Okay. Oh no, I would have moved. I would have been like, my wig would have been on the floor, stayed on the floor with my body. Yep. And the cops and the ambulance would re remove me. I'd be in shock. Ooh. Hands so to God. Knows so she knows it's wrong enough or it's egregious enough that legal action can be taken, but she refuses to condemn her actions. I think Monique has something on Karen. I think there's something out there that, you know, Karen is scared to death. Monique is going to tell about her. And that's why, you know, Karen doesn't want to give her opinion, but she gave it that night. So she just wanted to play the fence. And then it makes us feel like we can't even respect you because you have an opinion on everything, everything. But this, you don't have an opinion? That's why I told y'all, her shady ass. <laughs> her shady ass, I don't met her shady ass. I'm in the middle of this. This is the most difficult place to be this season. They are my two friends. And I can truly say I care deeply for both of these women. And so while I didn't agree with Candace, that was not the time to talk about that. You can't tell someone how to feel. No matter what the audience think, like Candace went too far, Candace shouldn't have done that. You cannot tell someone who was really distraught how to feel. And you can't tell someone who's going through certain emotions, you're not supposed to feel that. But she has a right to her feelings. And I had to accept that as her friend. And I knew that, you know, hey, we'll get through this. You know, it's gonna take some time. For me, what was clear was that uh, some of the girls, i.e. Robin and, and Giselle, wanted Monique and Candace to have a conversation. And so they encouraged it. And I clearly said, they're not ready. It wasn't the right time to push this conversation. She got a problem. Let's she... not throw her under the bus. I'm we not throwing her under the bus. They egged each other on. I'm gonna check on my friend. I said, no, please don't force them to have a conversation. Robin and Giselle started encouraging the conversation. And I just pretty much summed it up as, Candace is over there. And they're like, over there? What's over there? I'm like. She's over there. So then she got really upset. That's when it all popped off, when that conversation started happening. Listen to this, listen to this. At the winery, after the fight, Giselle and I are over in the, you know, 
off to the side. Karen walks over to us. She yes. walked over to, to me and Giselle and said, this is, this is what you all wanted. This is your fault. This is all, like, she literally said, this is what we wanted. And that's the reason why that happened. Right. In my opinion, Giselle will strike a match, let it burn and walk away. And, and you know, and that's what she did. I mean, I think we all thought it and just no one thought to say it, but Karen said it. Everyone had a different point of view and everyone had a different view of what they felt happened. But it's really, it, it all happened so quick. It's so hard to follow. Unfortunately, this fight for Giselle is the cherry on the cake. She was waiting for this and sitting on ready. And unfortunately, she got it. How dare you? You're the one that could have prevented this a long time ago. And we told her, shut up and sit down somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I told her, get the hell out of my face. Get out of here with that shit. Like, do not, this is, this is not acceptable. And that she is the one that could have prevented it because she was closest to them. Yes. She could have had a moment with them and really just said, look, I'm not accepting this anymore. So I was already a little just like disappointed with her. Um, because of that, because I'm like, how can she pinpoint something like this on us? We had zero to do with that. Giselle, Karen invites you and Ashley to visit her hometown, meet her family, see how she grew up. Ladies, you're actually gonna harvest corn. What? What made you decide to invite the two of them? I have to say, Ashley and I are growing. She deserved that. She deserved to share and, and to get to know me deeper and my family. It was nice to see her in a, an environment where we were celebrating something positive. So that was nice. Giselle, uh, well, you do with this what you want. You know I wanted my girls, Monique, and I wanted uh, Candace to go with me. And I had spoken to them. And it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> and that's true. You maybe wouldn't um, have invited Giselle otherwise. I probably wouldn't have, but it's important that she sees, uh, because she said some negative things in the past about being a farmer's daughter. Well, the, the truth of the matter is, you know, uh, we own the plantation that we grew up on as slaves. Okay, I don't have to ask, can I visit? I think what is so, you know, dramatic and, and compelling about Karen opening up is that she's generally so, so private and, and lends this certain dignity. Like, why are you so private? Who are you? You know, like there's a mystery. And I was like, you know what? I know what I felt, the pride I felt showing Giselle where I'm from, where I'm from and who I am and, and what lineage, what powerful lineage we have. Karen's family is fantastic. They are nothing like I expected. They are genuine, they're normal. Nobody's acting like a grand anything. It was just nice to see another side to Karen and it made me understand her a little bit better. And it made me understand and realize that, you know, she came from this little bitty small town in which everybody knows everybody. She was extra in her mind. You know, she was, she was Karen. And so she took, and, and everybody, like loved the fact that she was Karen and she took that same persona and then moved to a big town in which nobody cares that you're Karen. It's always <laughs> good to see where somebody came from. So I, I get it. I get it why Karen thinks that she is Princess Diana in her own mind. I get it. Speaking of Princess Diana, I mean, she participates in this parade <laughs> and she pushes you and Ashley to the sidelines. That was such a sweet moment. My people, beautiful baby. Oh, this is ridiculous. Sherry County, Virginia is the house. Yes. Last time I was in the Sherry County Parade, high school uh, homecoming parade, I was with sophomore in high school. <laughs> and I was on the float waving like that. Well, I think I came home all right this year. I was on a Bentley and, <laughs> and waving, you know. Well, she couldn't have me on the float with her because she know I would just upstage her and she didn't want that, you know, in her own little town. Everybody's like, hi, Giselle, and ain't nobody paying attention to Karen. She could not have that. Yeah, so, exactly. And it was fine. <laughs> Karen, Ashley and I can be on the side. We are in Surrey with three people. Like, no one cares but you. So have at it, girl. Get your shine. Robin, while you're talking to Candace, Candace brings up a little rumor of something that she has heard. I don't like to gossip. Are you are you okay with 
the stuff with your My taxes. taxes. Um, it's, it's bad. I mean, the blog said, like, I, like $90,000. You know, we like, you open Instagram and you never know what you're gonna get. Like, right? You know, we and we've seen that with with most of us. Wendy, your your day will come. It'll be something on the blogs. <laughs> I knew what Karen had gone through with her tax problems and her tax situation, but I I just wanted to make sure for Robin that she was okay with it i was doing my own taxes i was following them late it was just it was just a hot mess and i put it on the back burner okay i'll get to it one day i'll get to it one day i'll get to it one day finally it's like when i decide to get to it it's out of control but it definitely was a combination of things of even how i got there i had some old taxes from before my bankruptcy it was just a big juggling of things and I was irresponsible and I take responsibility for it. As we all build our businesses and increase our net worth, you know, Uncle Sam is gonna come and he wants his, he wants his cut. I, I understand how it happens. Cause it's like, it's not like paying the water bill where they're gonna cut the water off and you're like, <laughs> oh my God, let me pay the water in and they'll, so I could get my water turned back on. It's like, okay, I'll get to it. It's just that like ugly, like, ugh. When you get that mail, it's like, oh, I don't want to do, I do not want to know what's in here. I was going to say, you know, I always say that Robin is very consistent. She comes late to the party and late paying her taxes. Yeah. Okay? She's consistent. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I trust that it has been handled because they are still in their home and she is still getting her hair done. And looking good. Okay? And looking good. Looking good with Ms. the tea on Ms. the end. Miss Robin Dixon out okay. here looking okay. good. 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 We see you discuss the tax issues while you role play on a date with Juan. Where are you from? Latvia. Excuse me? Latvia. That sounds far away. It's in Europe. You know what? I have been told in the past that I look Russian or European or, you know, just like, I get like the most random countries. So with that dark wig, I felt Latvian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that looks like, but I just felt like I was from Latvia. Oh my God. Like I didn't figure it out until I sat down, like what my name was, where I was from, what my story was. Juan was looking at me like, you are nuts. Juan chooses the name Dylan. <laughs> right. What's your name? My name is Tatiana. <laughs> I'm Dylan Tatiana, nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, Dylan. And, and wait, and guess, and guess what he is? Guess what he is? He's a, I was a flight attendant, right? Was I a flight attendant? Yeah. And he was a retired basketball player. <laughs> Why, <Wah, bye. laughs> I'm like, really? Okay, really? okay, Why? <laughs> Breaking fourth wall and all, this wasn't about the show for me anymore. This is real life. And I'm not taking this lightly because I don't ever want this to happen again because I have way too much to lose and I have three little people who look up to me. 